Have you ever thought about how much water you actually consume in a day? Beyond the obvious, drinking, bathing, cooking, there's a hidden world of water usage you might not be aware of. It's an intricate web that connects the food we eat, the clothes we wear, even the energy we use, to our precious water resources. It's a concept known as a water footprint, and it's critical to understanding our role in the planet's water story. It's more than just the water that flows from your tap, and today, we will explore this in detail. Your water footprint goes beyond your direct water consumption. It's a measure of the total volume of fresh water used, both directly and indirectly, to produce the goods and services we consume. This includes everything from the water used to grow the food on your plate, to the water used in manufacturing the clothes you wear, and even the water needed to dilute pollutants. To fully grasp this concept, we need to understand the difference between green, blue, and gray water footprints. Green water footprint refers to rainwater stored in the soil and used by plants. Blue water footprint pertains to surface and groundwater used for irrigation, industrial processes, and household consumption. Lastly, the gray water footprint is an indicator of freshwater contamination, the volume of water required to dilute pollutants to an acceptable level. So, calculating your water footprint may be more complex than you initially thought. It's not merely about the water that flows from your tap, but the unseen water that sustains our daily lives. Ready to dive into the calculation of your water footprint? Let's get started. Calculating your water footprint can seem like a daunting task, but it's actually quite straightforward once you understand the process. It all begins with data collection. You're going to want to gather information about your water usage from every possible source. This includes the water you consume directly, like when you take a shower or wash your dishes, but also the water used indirectly, such as the water needed to produce the food you eat or the clothes you wear. Now it's important to distinguish between three types of water footprints, green, blue, and gray. Green water footprint refers to the rainwater absorbed by plants, blue water footprint relates to surface and groundwater used in production processes, and gray water footprint is the volume of fresh water required to dilute pollutants. Once you've gathered all this data, it's time to compile it. You'll want to aggregate the information to get a clear picture of your total water footprint, but don't just look at the big number. Break it down and analyze it. Which activities are using the most water? Where can you cut back? Remember the goal here isn't just to calculate your water footprint, but to understand it. By analyzing your water usage, you can identify areas where you're using more water than necessary and make changes to reduce your footprint. Whether it's opting for a meatless meal once a week, fixing that leaky faucet, or choosing to buy clothes from companies that prioritize water efficiency, every little bit helps. And as you start making these changes, you might just find that calculating your water footprint is not only enlightening, but empowering. With these steps, you can determine your total water footprint and identify areas where you can make improvements. It's a journey of discovery, one that leads to a more sustainable lifestyle and a healthier planet. And isn't that a journey worth taking? Now that you know how to calculate your water footprint, let's look at some startling facts. Firstly, did you know that it takes a whopping 16,000 liters of water to produce just one kilogram of meat? That's almost 4,000 gallons. Alternatively, a kilogram of rice requires 3,000 liters of water, and even 10 apples need 700 liters. Secondly, the scarcity of drinking water is a grave issue, causing the death of 4,500 children daily, predominantly in developing countries. Thirdly, consider the distressing case of cotton crops in Uzbekistan, Central Asia. Intensive irrigation for cotton production has dried out the Aral Sea. Interestingly, a significant portion of this cotton is exported, implying that the European Union is indirectly responsible for around 20% of the Aral Sea's desiccation. Looking ahead, by the year 2025, it's estimated that around 1.8 billion people will face water scarcity. Currently, 50 countries are grappling with severe or moderate water stress, and the situation could worsen due to climate change. Fifthly, among all products, cereals, meat, and milk require the most water. Next, something as seemingly insignificant as a dripping tap can waste up to 75 liters of water a day. Lastly, the countries that consume the most water are China, India, and the United States, accounting for 38% of global water usage. These facts underline the importance of understanding and reducing our water footprints. As we move forward remember, every drop counts. 
Together, through conscious efforts, we can ensure the sustainable use of our precious water resources for generations to come. Reducing your water footprint is not only beneficial for the environment, but can also be beneficial for you. Let's dive into some practical tips for reducing water footprints. Starting at the macro level, agricultural practices have a significant role to play. By adopting water-efficient practices like drip irrigation and crop rotation, we can significantly cut down on water usage. Additionally, the use of drought-resistant crop varieties can help conserve water in regions prone to dry spells. Shifting gears to the industrial sector, the implementation of water recycling and reuse systems are key. These systems can help minimize freshwater intake and reduce wastewater discharge, contributing to a lower overall water footprint. It's also important for industries to invest in technologies that require less water and produce less pollution, further reducing their gray water footprint. Now let's bring it home. On a personal level, we can all make a difference in reducing our water footprint. It's the little things that add up. Taking shorter showers, fixing leaks as soon as they occur, and opting for water-efficient appliances are just a few of the ways to conserve water in our daily lives. But our influence doesn't stop at our front door. As consumers, we wield considerable power. By choosing to support products and companies with lower water footprints, we send a message to the market about the kind of practices we want to see. We can also advocate for sustainable water management practices in our communities and beyond. Lastly, let's not forget about diet. What we eat can have a large impact on our water footprint. Consuming less meat and more plant-based foods can significantly reduce the amount of water required to produce our food. In conclusion, reducing our water footprint is a multifaceted effort that requires a combination of technological advancements, behavioral changes, and policy interventions. It's about making conscious choices every day, from the products we buy to the food we eat and the way we use water at home. Remember, every drop counts and your actions can make a significant difference. Reducing our water footprints is a collective responsibility. It's a statement that echoes the sentiment of shared duty, a call to action for all of us to take part in the grand scheme of preserving our planet's most precious resource, water. But why is it so important? Well, it's not just about saving water for our daily needs, it's about the broader implications of reducing our water footprints. These implications extend far beyond our individual lives and touch on issues like sustainable development, climate change mitigation, and global water security. When we talk about sustainable development, we're referring to a kind of growth that meets present needs without compromising the ability of future generations to meet theirs. Reducing our water footprints contributes to this by ensuring that we're not depleting or polluting our water resources faster than they can be replenished. It's about making sure that our children and their children have access to the same resources that we do. And then there's climate change. As temperatures rise, so does the rate of evaporation, leading to more frequent and severe droughts. At the same time, warmer air can hold more moisture, leading to more intense rainfall and flooding in other areas. By reducing our water footprints, we can help mitigate these effects by reducing the demand on our water resources and making them more resilient to these changes. Finally, there's the issue of global water security. As our population grows and our water resources become more strained, conflicts over water could become more common. By reducing our water footprints, we can help ease these tensions by ensuring there's enough water to go around. So, reducing our water footprints isn't just about doing our part to save water. It's about contributing to a larger global effort to create a sustainable, resilient and peaceful world. It's about understanding that every drop counts and that our actions, no matter how small, can have a ripple effect that reaches far beyond our individual lives. We all have a role to play in this. Governments, industries, and individuals alike need to take action to reduce their water footprints. We need to make smarter choices, adopt more efficient practices, and prioritize sustainability in everything we do. So next time you turn on the tap, think about your water footprint and how you can make a positive impact. It's not just about the water you're using right now, it's about the legacy you're leaving for future generations. It's about taking responsibility for our planet and working together to protect our most precious resource. Because at the end of the day, we're all in this together.